Blavatsky, Secret Doctrine, Volume 2. The philosophical system of the Gnostics and the primitive Jewish Christians, the Nazarenes and the Ebionites are fully considered. They show the view held in these days outside the circle of Mosaic Jews about Jehovah. He was identified by all the Gnostics with evil. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Best Gnosis. Thank you once again for joining me. Uh, it's 2021, so Happy New Year. Got a lot of things I've been working on to share with you. Uh, but with that said, let's get started. And so today we're going to be talking about the two gods of the Bible. And I believe to have a better understanding of who the two gods in the Bible are, we need a full understanding of who the creator God in the Bible is. But getting started with John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So if there's really any question here, it would be, who is the word? Well, I'd say there's a simple answer for that here in John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But what does that actually mean when it says the word created all things? Uh, I think we get a much clearer understanding when we read verses such as Genesis 1-3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God spoke creation into existence. Therefore, Jesus is the spoken word of God. And moving into the next verse, we get more confirmation on Jesus being the first of all things. Colossians 1, 15 through 17, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. And so we're going to just move down one verse, Colossians 1, 18, and he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So let's take a look at that word preeminence real quick. So let's jump over to the Strong's. Uh, and here we see preeminence means to have the first place. So Jesus is clearly saying he is the first of all things, not some things, all things. Uh, and he includes this. This is why it's stated this way, folks, the firstborn of every creature, because the very bottom verse explains it. He's the first uh, of his church who is the beginning, and he is the firstborn from the dead. So he is the firstborn of all creatures to resurrect in the transfigured body that he teaches in his gospel called the kingdom. Okay, so with the verses that we've covered, I'd say at this point, it's safe to say that Jesus was before all things. Jesus created all things. Jesus is the word. The word is God and the word became flesh. Therefore, God became flesh. And we get confirmation of that over in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, over in the Strong's Concordance, we see Emmanuel in Hebrew means with us is God. So even Jesus's prophetic name means that God is with you. Okay, so now I'd like to dive just a little bit deeper into the Bible uh, and explore uh, a truth that I think is constantly misunderstood. Uh, and that is going to be the topics that surround the two trees in the garden. So, of course, we have the tree of uh, life, 
And then we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So let's get started. Jumping in at John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. So here we have Jesus speaking to the disciples and he's telling them that they should go forth and bring fruit, a fruit that should remain. I'd say it's safe to say that we're not dealing with an assortment basket of fruit. Jumping over to Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 and 22. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lasciviousness. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Here we can clearly see that the works of the flesh is the equivalent to the fruit of the spirit. Therefore, the fruit of the spirit are the works of the spirit versus the works of the flesh. Next up, we have Matthew 12 verses 33 and 35. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So once again, we have Jesus making a clear as day comparison to the individual being a representation of the tree and the individual's works being a representation of the tree's fruit. And John 14, 11 confirms this. Believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Uh, why? Well, that's pretty easy because the tree is known by its fruit. And what kind of fruit does Jesus produce? Let's take a look at Luke 4, 40 through 41. Now, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them onto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Clearly, they knew him by his fruit. Next, we have Matthew 4, verses 23 through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Verse 24, and his fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. So Jesus became famous, well known throughout the area, for healing people. In fact, Jesus even goes on to resurrect people from the dead. Three people, a fourth including himself. So he is well known for life-giving works. That is what Jesus is known for. Now, there came a time where Jesus was teaching in the synagogue of Capernaum. And uh, he was talking to the Jews, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. And uh, quite frankly, some of his teachings... Uh, to them were very controversial. They couldn't quite grasp what the message was that Jesus was trying to lay down. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those teachings now. So that brings us to John 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So basically, stop striving so hard to accomplish the works of the flesh, which eventually just spoils and dies, and start striving for the works of the spirit, which brings on eternal life. And so the Jews that are listening to him, they, they start to pick up on what he's saying, and they actually counter him. They challenge him uh, because they want to put him to the test 
uh, based on what he's saying. So here's what they, they say to him in John 6, 30 through 31. They said, therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And so, so basically what we have happening here is they're, they're looking at him going, well, Yahweh gave us manna from heaven to eat. What are you going to do to, sh- to prove your works, to show us who you are? So I think it'd be a wise choice at this time to fact check those Pharisees and Jews. Let's see if what they're saying is actually biblical. So let's take a look at Exodus 16, 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Well, that's interesting because now it looks like we have a clear standoff. Jesus has been challenged. Let's see what he has to say about that. And we're going to find that in John 6, verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So Jesus doesn't even agree with the Pharisees, Jews, and Sadducees, nor does he even agree with the scripture. That's interesting. Then Jesus goes on to say in John 6, 35, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Next up is John 6, 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Moving on to John 6, verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So unless you believe that Jesus founded a cannibalistic vampire cult where we are all to eat of each other uh, to gain eternal life, then there really is no reason to assume that we are all destined to go to hell because we ate an apple in the garden. And for the sake of time, here's another 12 verses uh, in scripture that show the comparison between a man being represented as a tree and his works being represented as fruit. So without a doubt, it's hammered in the Bible that the tree represents man and fruit represents works. And so in conclusion, we can clearly see that Jesus was before all things He is the creator of all things. He is God in the flesh, and he was and is the tree of life. Which now brings us to the other tree in the garden. Exodus 6, verses 2 to 4, very important passage. Exodus 6, verses 2 to 4 assigned to P and here God says, I am Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not make myself known to them by my name, Yahweh. Now this contradicts the J source. And many scholars have suggested that P and E preserve a memory of a time when Israel worshiped the Canaanite God El. P and E wish to claim that the God who covenanted with the patriarchs is the God of the Exodus, but now with a new name. 